So this series is about building a report from scratch to meet your requirements, but it's also about continuous improvement. So if you've been following along, you'll see that I've been developing out this uh, COVID report for Australia, just so that I can get a complete picture of what's going on. So this is one of the pages that I've developed previously. And on the right hand side, early on in the series, I built this daily deaths for the month. So you could select the month that you wanted to have a look at and see the daily deaths. And it's occurred to me now, so today is the uh, 1st of August at the time that I recorded this video. And of course, once I jump and change the um, slicer at the top for August, there's basically only going to be one row in this table. So I didn't consider that previously. And this is just the reality. You will not get it perfect the first time. And so today I'm going to fix that problem. And I'm also going to show you how to create some dynamic commentary. This is much easier than you may imagine. And the reason I'm going to do this is that I like to share specific comments with people in Twitter and things like that. And so by building this dynamic commentary visual, I'm going to be able to just very quickly and easy get the facts and share those facts. So that's the objective today. All right. So if you recall from one of the earlier videos, I put this a blue box around this section because I wanted to make it clear that this slicer interacted with this matrix. And so that's really no longer needed. So I'm going to get rid of that. So I'll delete that. I'm going to delete this slicer. I don't need this slicer anymore. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a relative date filter on this visual. So pop out the filter pane, make sure you're looking in this section filters on this visual, come down to the date and I'll change it from a basic filter to a relative date filter. And I want to show items in the last 30 days. And I do want it to include today. So I'll apply the filter. And so now this particular visual will show me the last 30 days, which is the most relevant data to take a look at in more detail. So once that's set, I can close that out. I also need to update this title because this title was previously an expression based format. So I need to come down to the title clear the expression based format and put a new title. So this is all right, so that's a better title. Now, given this visual size will not change significantly. Uh, in actual fact, it will vary by one day. So I've said to include today. So depending on what today's date is and whether I've refreshed this visual, then will either be 29 or 30 days in this visual. I don't think that's going to trouble anyone. So this gives me a bit of real estate. So I'm just going to, it's the first today. So I'm going to assume there's only 29 days. I'll leave a little bit of space there. All right, so let me bring this down. I'm going to start to resize my visual and I'm going to use the space that I've got for this dynamic commentary, which I talked about before. Um, the other thing I do need to do is I want to change this visual because currently it doesn't show anyone in there, naught to 10, tens to 20s. So I'm just going to come in and change this one. So I click on it, come down to the fields, come on to the, uh, in this case, it's the columns. And I want to show items with no data. Just once again, this is all about giving the complete picture of what's going on. So the fact is no one under 20 has died. In fact, no one has died ever under 20 in Australia from COVID. So that's the size it needs to be. I'll leave that space there for now. I'm going to move this stuff across. So multi-select does work these days. So I'll just slide this across. I do like to try and keep the spacing the same. So I'm going to move that across and then I'll just individually move these ones back. You know, this stuff takes time. And if you do a little bit at the time, if you do it when you're working on it, you'll find that the load basically goes away. So I do try and keep all the spaces between my visuals consistent if I can. So graphic design is a big topic, but um, it certainly does make things look better. I actually don't like this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this out by aligning the parallel lines. It really makes things look better. All right. So I'm also missing my zeros and tens down here. So I'll come do the same thing here. So show items with no data, giving a more complete picture. All right. So I've now set that up. Actually, one more thing that I really don't like. Notice how the shadow of this top 
text box is over the top here. So I could increase the size, but I think I can fix it just by changing the order. So I'm going to come up to selection and I want this particular visual and this one actually to be in front of the text box. So you can see that this one is currently right down the bottom. So if I move that up to the top, it basically brings it to the front and I need to do the same with this one. Although I've got to be careful with this one. So I might just move this to the bottom. That's probably, the, and that is to the bottom. I'll just give it a name. This will be my a title. Just make it easier to find it later on. Um, also notice that this one's got a shadow coming from these boxes. I actually learned all these tips from Reed Havens in the excellent training course about um, visualization at skillwave.training. So I'm going to take this one and I need this one to be further up, certainly further up than these two. So I'm just going to maybe I'll just give these names. So that's deaths by age. This one's, um, I gave that a strange name at some point. So detailed. So I need those two first. And then this one is that one. So I need that one to be in front. And that way the shadow will not cast over that. Okay, so that's fixed that problem, but this one is still a problem. So in actual fact, the order is I want right to left, bottom to top. That's the order they need to appear. So we have this followed by these two should come next, which they do. Then this one should come next. And then the title should come last. And that should fix the shadows, which it appears to have done. All right, so let's put a text box up here. So I'm going to show you how to do dynamic commentary. It's so much easier than you might expect. And so all I have to do is add a text box. So I'll just put this in place. Let me position it before I move on. And for consistency, I'm going to turn on the shadow on that one as well. And this feature has been around for many months, maybe years, and I've actually never used it, but I have a perfect use case for it today. So there are two pieces of information that I want to include in this commentary. I want to add the average age at death with COVID. And I also want to make a comment about how many people under 70 have died with COVID. So they're the two pieces of information I want to add to this commentary. If I jump over to my deaths detail, I do have an average age at death measure. So I'm going to use that. And I'm just going to write a new measure, which gives me the total number of people under 70 that have died with COVID. So just let me write that measure first. So this will be total deaths with COVID. And I'm going to manipulate filtering behavior. So I need calculate. I need total deaths. So calculate the deaths and now I need to put a filter on the age brackets. And so I need age brackets to be less than or equal to this 70. In actual fact, I've got this roll up column, which I use for one of my other features. So I can actually hard code basically using that roll up. So that means I can come in here and say roll up, ages roll up equals less than 70. So it's good to reuse these features that you're building into the report. Okay, total deaths with COVID under 70. The answer should be 58. So um, we'll find out in a second. Here's the measure. I'll just apply comma separation, although it's probably not going to be uh, required. Okay, so now I've got my measure total deaths with COVID under 70. And I have another measure average age at death. In that case, it's a very simple measure. And now I can go ahead and write my commentary, my dynamic commentary. So all I have to do is I have to say, just basically write whatever it is I want to say. Okay, the average age of death with COVID in Australia is, and I click this plus value, and this is a artificial intelligence tool. I could actually try and write some sort of instructions in here 
and it may actually successfully generate an implicit measure for me. But in this case, I've already got a measure. I would prefer to control the measure myself. And so I can now refer to that measure. Okay, average age at death. The answer is 81. That is correct. I'm going to give this a name. It's a bit sort of double entry here. It looks like I might have to add um, a second level of formatting here, but I'll just go ahead and do that just in case. Okay, so there it is. The average age at death with COVID in Australia is 81. The next piece I want to add is the total deaths with COVID under 70. Okay, so there are a total of how many people under 70 that have died with COVID. So I can add the value in here and this is total Okay, same as before, I'm going to come down and do the formatting and I'll call this give it a name. I'm assuming that means I can reuse that inside another visual. I can't really increase the space I've got here. I'd prefer this to fit on one line. So, so I can just improve this a little bit. And maybe what I'll do is I'll put a head up up here. as at and then I've got a date here I'm not really sure uh, maybe it was refresh date let's have a look at that I think that was it and of the format control this so I have to pick one of the items in the list so that one I'll do let's go save uh, first of the eighth that's correct although technically I haven't refreshed this report but uh, I think uh, well, here's the latest date here. Let's go and have a look at what this particular item does. So this is coming chart label latest. All right, let me go back and change this. So I click here. Uh, in fact, chart label latest includes text box. I need to actually go and have a look at that. So let's have a look at chart label latest. It basically pulls out called latest data. I thought that's what I used, but let's go ahead. Uh, no, I've got refresh date. We need latest data. Okay, so and now I'll call this latest data. All right, so now because it's a text box, I can do any of the normal formatting that I would like. I'm gonna put that bold, just increase the font size a little bit. And there, there we have it, a dynamic text box, which explains exactly what's going on. So um, this is easy for people to read. Once it's published up in the service, my assumption is that it will not have these underlines. So let's just go ahead and check that out. I might just do a refresh before I do that. I think there might be some new data. Let's have a look. Okay, so that you can see it's updated. These numbers haven't changed and that's correct and appropriate. And so I'll now publish it to the service. Now, before you publish to the service, you should always set the status of your report the way you want it to be when people first navigate to the report in the service. So I'm going to navigate to the home page and then I'll hit publish. It will prompt me to save, which is fine. And it's my COVID. If you're wanting this, the latest copy of this report at any time, um, I will give you the URL. I'll just add it here. I just have a short code in place. And so in fact, what I'll do is I'll just turn that into a hyperlink. 
So, so that's the hyperlink if you ever want to see the latest version of this report. I won't republish it straight away. I'll do that again uh, later. And now let me navigate through. Okay, so here we are in the service. So let me jump to my deaths detail page. And as you can see now that it's published in the service, there is none of that information that tells me which of these words and numbers has been automatically generated. All right, now just before I wrap up, I've just noticed that there's a problem. So I'm back here in my desktop file and notice that this says that there's a total of 924 people under 70 that have died with COVID. That's not correct. That's actually the total number of all people that have died with COVID. So I need to go and investigate this particular problem. So if I come in here and have a look at the measure, you'll see that it says calculate deaths where age roll up is less than 70. So we need to go and have a look at the ages roll up. And here's the ages roll up. So less than 70 is correct. If I jump over here to the model, you'll see that ages filters detailed deaths. So that would seem to be correct. So let's go and investigate this deaths. So if I have a look at this deaths measure, the deaths measure comes from daily deaths in the data attribute column. And if I jump back here, the data table is not filtered by the age table. So this is a legacy from one of the earlier versions of the report that I built where I was downloading the global data before I moved over to more specific Australian data. So the age data does not filter that measure. And so I actually need to come back and change this measure so it uses the Australian measure. And so I will just go and have a look at what the name of the Australian measure is. It's the detailed death count. So I need to go and fix this problem. So this should be detailed death count. So let me go ahead and fix that. I also noticed that this number here is slightly different, but that's correct because this one is using the detailed death count, whereas up here I was using the legacy death count. Now it's really important when you build reports that you take responsibility for your data. So you need to test it, you need to make sure it's correct. In this case, I made an error and so I've fixed that report. While I'm here, I might just um, move this up. I've got plenty of space and I think that'll make the whole thing look a little bit uh, more aligned. So, so there we go. So that's how you can create dynamic commentary using Power BI. I hope you found this useful.